you look at this, and again, to, to be clear here, Trump endorsed uh, Dr. Oz. What do the primaries in Pennsylvania and elsewhere, other crucial states, of course, you know, Idaho, uh, Oregon, Kentucky, North Carolina, tell you about how successful Trump's endorsements have been? Uh, let's be clear at the outset, we're still early in this primary season, but we do have a trend so far. We'll see what happens as we move on through the primaries. But remember this number. Dr. Oz is Donald Trump's candidate in, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. He gets 31.2 percent. Well, uh, let's go back a couple Tuesdays. Let's go over to the state of Ohio and the big Senate primary there. J.D. Vance was Donald Trump's candidate. 32 percent. Remember that right about the same as what Oz got. Let's move. You mentioned there's some governor's races. Let's look at the Republican side. Let's come back out. Uh, Nebraska, we went through that primary a Tuesday ago. Uh, Trump's candidate was at 30 percent, again, roughly 30 percent. Last night out in Idaho, uh, Trump was on the losing end. He supported the lieutenant governor, Janet McGeehan. What did she get? 32 percent. Aaron, you notice that pattern here? There's, it happens in House races as well. Let me just bring this up and give you a chance to look at it. These are Trump's endorsements, some of them, not all of them, in recent primaries. But you see a line, 30 percent, 32 percent. Mastriano in Pennsylvania, an exception, 44 Vance 32, Oz 31. And even in House races, even in House races, it was enough in North Carolina for Bo Hines. 32% was enough. He beat his opponent there. Uh, it was enough, 32% for J.D. Vance in the Ohio Senate race. We will see if 31 or so is enough for Dr. Oz. But we do know, Aaron, it depends how many candidates are in the field, how strong are the other candidates. Because in North Carolina, the incumbent Madison Cawthorn got that late endorsement from Donald Trump. He got 32% yesterday. That was not enough.